So here's application number two, final one. Don't give to the kingdom to be blessed. Give to the kingdom because you are blessed. That's a huge shift. Don't give to God so that he'll bless you in return. Give to God because he's already blessed you. Okay, and that's, that's the shift you see from the Old Testament to the New Testament. In the Old Testament, you see it in Malachi. God's like, look, I want you to give to me Give 10%, I want you to set it aside, keep it holy unto the Lord, don't touch it. And if you'll do that, if you don't believe me that I'm gonna bless you, put me to the test, I'll blow your socks off. And so God says he'll bless us, but that can't be the reason in the New Testament that we give. A lot of churches out there saying, hey, if you'll give, you'll get this in return. But there's a shift. The shift happens in the New Testament. The Old Testament, you give so that God will extravagantly bless you. And the New Testament, you've been extravagantly blessed by God, therefore you extravagantly give. You see the difference? There's a difference. Let me, let me show you, let me show you what I'm talking about. Ephesians 1.3, just to show you how much you've been blessed. Ephesians 1.3 says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's the difference. Old Testament, you give to be blessed. New Testament, you realize, my goodness, I've been blessed beyond my wildest imagination. Then what other response do I have but to bless God in return? I'll give you an analogy and then uh, we'll be done. So this summer, you what this looks like. This summer was Jennifer and I's 26 year anniversary. Um, the, that's a long time to live with me. I'm just saying that, that's a long time to live with me. And she is amazing. And, and so we did a couple things for our 26 year anniversary. Um, on the night of our anniversary, we went to dinner and it was a really cool dinner because all we did really for two hours, we just sat there and we talked about the days where we met, like our first days hanging out together and our first date. And um, it was really cool because I had forgotten things that she remembered and she had forgotten things that I remembered. And so we just talked for a couple hours about it. It was really fun. But the other thing that I did is I, I decided um, uh, to take her uh, to, I'm not gonna tell you where and I'll tell you why in a second, but I took her, I took her someplace else besides dinner. Uh, I took her on vacation for a week. And I'll talk about that in a second. But one of the things we did that night as we talked at dinner is we talked about our first date. I've told you before, I was at A&M, we met in class. She was beautiful, she was funny, she loved Jesus. And I'm like, I have got to take this woman out on a date and impress her. Now y'all remember from last week, I had a conversation with God and I was like, God, this is not a Chili's kind of woman. This is a, this is a Perry Steakhouse kind of woman. But what I did not tell you is that I, I did not have a Perry Steakhouse kind of budget. And so our first date was actually at Chili's. It's a true story. <laughs> but, right, went to Chili's and, and here's what I did. I'd been working at Pizza Hut. I had some money saved up. I was like, I am going to impress this girl. I'm gonna bless her. And the reason I wanted to bless her because I wanted her to like me. So when we got to Chili's, I was like, girl, you can order anything you want. <laughs> you want chicken crispers, you, you go for it. You want an appetizer? Let's go, right? Get some of those chips and salsa, which are amazing, by the way. That's what we did. We were at chips and salsa. I think I actually got chicken crispers. That's why I almost had a heart attack. And then, and then uh, I don't remember what she ordered. I think we got dessert. It was like a lava cake or something. Now, now look, I think it was back then, that would have been, my gosh, 1993. It was like 38 bucks. It almost broke me. But... Wanted her to like me. So afterwards, I took her to a movie. Now, I didn't take her to any movie. I took her to a dollar movie because I was pretty much out of money. And we went to the dollar movie theater. We saw uh, Sleepless in Seattle when it was in the, a great movie, if you've never seen it. And there's this one scene where fireworks are going off. And I had this planned out. And I looked at her and I smiled at her and I said, would you, would you be willing to hold my hand? And... She said yes, and I grabbed her hand and put her hand in mine. It was like a thousand volts of lightning just <laughs> went through my mind, my body. It's the coolest thing I'd ever experienced in my young life. So here's what I want you to see. 
Why did I do all that giving? I, I, I did all that giving because I wanted to, I wanted her to bless me. I wanted her to like me and it worked. Like I gave, <laughs> she blessed, right? <laughs> but as 26 years rolled around, there's, there's something that, that, that dawned on me. There was, a, there was a shift in me as our 26 year anniversary rolled around is that Chili's in a dollar movie wasn't quite the message I wanted to send. And so this summer I saved, I saved my money and I took her to um, this beach. And it was actually not like a crazy amount of money or thinking, you know, like big pastor church kind of thing. It was 2000 bucks, which is a lot of money for us, but this place was amazing. And uh, it was this little house. It was actually a private beach about 400 yards long crystal clear blue water. We didn't see anybody all week long. And um, you're asking me, Matt, only $2,000 for private beach. Where is it? I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you showing up at it. But it was, it was amazing. It was, a, it was probably the best vacation we've ever been on. We, gosh, we talked for hours. We got up and we watched sunrises. We watched sunsets. We we just had this really cool time connecting with each other over the course of that week. And here's the shift that happened in my heart, guys, is God is my witness. Here's the shift that happened. I was not concerned at all about whether or not she was going to bless me. The only thing that I was concerned about is I want to bless her. Why? Why did I want to bless her? Because after 26 years, it's dawned on me that with the exception of Jesus Christ, this woman's been the greatest blessing in my life. This woman left Houston and moved to Austin, left an incredible job, moved to Austin uh, and, and lived in abject poverty for three years while we planted a church. This is, this is the, the woman that carried all three of my children in her womb and then spent hours giving labor to them. This is this is the woman that has stood by my side through cancer and comforted me in the death of my mother and then walked through cancer again with me. This is the woman that stood by me when a lot of women would have not stood by me for 26 years. She has been a constant source of love and encouragement and pointing me to Jesus to the point that if she died today, I could stand at her funeral without hesitation and say she was a Proverbs 31 woman. She lived it out. The charm is, charm is deceitful. Charm is deceitful and beauty is in vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. I could say it without hesitation. And as I think about that, the way that she has blessed me, my only response is how in the world can I not bless her? That's a picture of New Testament giving. When you think about all that God has done, when you think about all that he's provided for you and been faithful to you, what other response is there but to say, God, I'm going to bless you.